The Honorable Member for Edmund McClung, followed by the Honorable Member for Edmund Beverly Clairview. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In his response to me, dated September 25th, the Minister of Infrastructure indicated that when daily average traffic noise levels exceed 65 decibels, noise mitigation is considered. Not implemented, but considered. The Minister also denied that his department keeps any inventory of corresponding maximums in other Canadian jurisdictions. My constituents are concerned about noise levels on the Anthony Hende, and a quick search reveals that BC, for example, has noise guidelines where levels as low as 55 decibels are considered for noise mitigation, and at 65, they're certainly implemented. How can the minister do his job properly if he does not know how we compare to other provinces? Will he take my constituents' concerns as seriously as he would those from Calgary Fort? The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, if the Honourable Member was listening, and I will take... I take all Albertans' issues very, very seriously. But I would like to say to the Honourable Member that right now we follow the same bylaws and guidelines of the other cities, Mr. Speaker, and we do make sure that we will test and we will look after the issues, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Now, what's worse than the noise are the delays and long waits, the safety and navigational challenges at those locations where the Hendy intersects Lessard Road, Collingwood Road, and Cameron Heights Drive. Again, my constituents have been asking for the overpasses to replace these inter intersections, but the Minister's letter indicates to me that there is no room for us in his current three-year plan. To the Minister, why are those residents in the West End treated this way as compared to those travelling the south west, southeast leg and now the northwest leg who enjoy faster and smoother commutes with no signal rights? This is a freeway, right? We're all equal, right? <laughs> Mr. Speaker, we do plan on making both ring roads, the full ring roads, a freeway at some point in time, Mr. Speaker. The two second and third legs that we've been doing, Mr. Speaker, were done as under a P3 partnership, and the full, complete freeway status was part of the RFP, Mr. Speaker. And also, I will say that when we took over the, the, the roads on that west end, they were City of Edmonton roads, and City of Edmonton had done a survey and, and a review and had, and had showed that we wouldn't have traffic counts till a, lo a lot further out. We have now got those traffic counts when we open the east leg, and I am proceeding as fast as I possibly can, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Funny the minister should say this. The city of Edmonton now is raising and stating its concerns about the status of these intersections because the minister is now responsible for them. The Edmund, so has the Edmonton Economic Development Corporation, so has the Chamber of Commerce. It's not only a convenience issue anymore, it's actually starting to adversely affect business. Higher than expected growth across the city, and particularly in my area, means that the department's forecasts, not just the city's, but his forecasts and timetables were also off, and they need to adjust and move forward quickly. To the minister, when can the city, business, and my constituents expect to see these uh, overpasses finally built? The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, as I had stated before, on the Stony Plain Road one, we're getting the functional study and or the functional engineering done as we speak. I am trying to move ahead as fast as I can to get it within our three-year plan, and we do plan on trying to move it ahead as, as fast as we possibly can. And I'm not sure we could move any faster than we're moving on it right now, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member.